Partisan politics in contemporary Nigeria is known to have germinated in and took its baby steps here in Lagos, which by accident of history has become an integral part of the southwestern part of the country. Add to, the fact, add to that the fact that some of the most profound political developments that have forged Nigeria in our present form and composition took place in these parts. Little wonder that many historians and students of history have at various times attempted to apply the term Wild Wild West to the politics of the region. It is 2021 and Nigeria is once again closing in on another one of those critical points in our democratic experience. How are things shaping up in the Southwest? And having stayed true to the same ideological standpoint for so long, I built in different forms. How is the Southwest of Nigeria preparing for Nigeria decides 2023. Joining us now to have a discussion around this is Chief Olusha Gunoshoba, a two-time governor of Ogun State in southwest Nigeria. A renowned journalist who will also be talking to him about media coverage of government activities and the clamor for and against censorship, fake news, COVID-19 devastation, restructuring and state police, and not to forget an assessment of the Buhari administration's report card on security economy and anti-corruption. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Ruben. Morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Well, very quickly, I mean, the politics of 2023 uh, has already uh, started, understandably. And there are persons who are saying that the presidency should go to the east, to Ibos, to ensure justice and equity. Uh, but there are also, in the southwest, uh, persons in the Southwest who are saying, yes, the Southwest can also make a bid uh, for the presidency. And then there are critics who are saying, look, there should be no, nothing like rotation, because rotation of zoning is not uh, in the constitution, uh, the 1999 constitution. That's the Nigerian constitution. Uh, where do you stand in all of this? What's your position? Uh, should the uh, Southwest, that has uh, shown interest, that has been president for eight years, and also vice president, it appears, uh, uh, for another eight years, uh, should the Southwest even be talking about the presidency of Nigeria in 2023 at all? Uh, why not? Um, my honest opinion is this. I was the chairman of the Constitutional Drafting Committee of the APC Maja. We of the ACN, we were the dominant um, group from the South. And the Southwest is the home and the root of progressive politicking. Part of the understanding in the case of rotation is an, uh, a conventional understanding that the presidency will move between the north and the south. That was the reason why we now allow the chairman, I, I mean, I, I don't want to use the word zoning, because we definitely did not put zoning in our constitution because we know it may go into conflict with the Nigerian constitution, which says that anybody who is a Nigerian who has read up to uh, school, West African school certificate can contest and at the age of 35, I think, for the presidency of the country. But there was a very clear gentlemanly understanding that the northern part of the country will produce the president when we did the budget in 2013. 
and the chairman of the party will then come from the south. We have had a president for eight years, for uh, six and a half years now, from the north in APC. The president will be there for eight years until 2023. The chairmanship has moved from Chibisi Akonde in Southwest to John Oyegu from South South and then from Governor John Oyegu to Governor Adams Oshomele, also from South South. Of course, at the end of the tenure of President Mamadou Buhari, the gentlemanly arrangement is that the presidency will come to the South. Uh, and I talk of the South in terms of the two countries or territory that were forced to amalgamate in 1914, um, which means the south-south, the southeast, and the southwest zones, which are also not in the Constitution, can bid and should be allowed to produce the next president for this country. Therefore, those from the southeast, those from the south south, those from the southwest can put our candidates for the party's primary. And whoever emerges from the primary can then be the candidate of our, party, of our party. That is the gentlemanly understanding that we reach when we were doing the major arrangement. OK. Uh, so zoning was not in your constitution, but restructuring is something that was touted by your party. And you, alongside some other APC chieftains, I have clamored or have identified the need to uh, restructure the governance style to address not just the problem of insecurity, but that of the strained unity in the country at the moment. So I wonder, and a lot of people are wondering, your party touted this, you know, as something you're going to do, as a formula. So what exactly does the APC and the president have against restructuring? Why haven't we seen it? I want to be very honest with you. I am one of those that was given the mandate by the ACN then. The ACN uh, was a very crucial party and a crucial part of the merger because we were the strongest in the South. We had all the governors in the Southwest. We produced the highest number of governors uh, at the point of merger among all the parties that uh, were involved in the merger, the CPC and the ACN were the major player. The APGA did not participate, but Governor um, Okorocha of IMO partic participated as an individual because the APGA uh, as a party did not participate and he was the governor under the umbrella of APGA. But he represented the East. So, so to say, and we of the ACN went into the merger 
Because we had all the time when we were in AD, as governors, we were fighting for the restructuring of Nigeria. And we were always in court with uh, the then president, Obasanjo, of fiscal federalism. We went to court that all the revenue should go into a federation account from where it should be distributed according to agreed formula stated in the Constitution. President Obasanjo went in breach of that provision. He was, he was just spending the money as he liked. He, he even went as far as uh, tampering with the local government fund and using it to buy vehicles for police and all kinds of things. And we won and won, and then when he didn't listen, we went to court and won the case. Secondly, he started tampering with the local government system. He kept encouraging the local government uh, chairman to form uh, what they call Algon. And we, 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 we told him pointedly that you have no right whatsoever to interfere with the affairs of the local government in our states. We then of the AD were very, very strong on those issues. He didn't listen. He encouraged them to be forming a federation of local government. And we said, local government is purely the affairs of the state. When he, when he did not listen to our counseling, we went to court. In actual fact, he brought a memo to the Council of State on local government reform. And we threw it out on the ground that we were in court. And uh, the following week, we won the case again that the affairs of local government should be within the uh, business of the different federated states. So I'm just giving examples of some of the, re the reforms that we took and how we were fighting President Obasanjo on many issues, on issue of uh, federation. So we have been carrying on this philosophy. And you recall that at a point, he seized the fund of the local government uh, authorities in Lagos State because Lagos State created uh, local government development uh, uh, point. I, I did the same thing. I created uh, local government development uh, uh, system in Ogu State and took the uh, creation up to the National Assembly. All this we were doing to test and ensure that we had a true federalism. And I'm sure because of all these actions that we didn't allow uh, President Ambassador to just go haywire and uh, turn the centre into a more powerful uh, 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 a united non-federal system that made him at that point to rig the election in all the Southwest and ensure that those of us who are highly uh, strong and vociferous at uh, Council of State did not return as uh, governors. I have no regret. Um, I have my peace of mind. I offer to serve if People in Nigeria agreed to let Obasanjo the then rig the election and return home. So these are the things that we were fighting for then as AD. It was this philosophy that we carried on into the merger. And we of the ACN, part of the agreement that we reached, and I was a strong member of the merger group. As I said, I was the chairman of the Constitutional Drafting Committee where we laid down, down a lot of provisions in our constitution that will have served as check and balances. We insisted on a true federalism and a restructuring of the country. And we insisted that this should be part of the promise that we will make to Nigeria. Because those of us in Southwest, 
uh, the leaders uh, on the issue of restructuring, and it was embedded in the APC manifesto. If you Google the manifesto of the APC today, you will see the promise we made to Nigeria in that manifesto, of which I was a very strong uh, advocate of the issue of me and my colleagues in ACN of true federalism and restructuring, which was accepted and was put in our constitution. So we fought for it. Now, uh, after we now won the election, but it took some time before we were able to get to the point of addressing the uh, issue of restructuring. It was Governor John Oyegu as chairman that set up a very powerful committee under the chairmanship of uh, the governor of Cardinal State, Erufai, and the now Minister of Internal Affairs, uh, the then governor, Regba Shola of Oshun, a very strong advocate of true federalism, uh, a, a genuine Omolo Abi Yoruba, was a member of that committee, and the committee did a very exhaustive and scientific uh, analysis. They tested opinions in all the zones, and a, an exhaustive report was written on restructuring Nigeria. They accepted state police, they as, accepted resource control, they accepted uh, control of local government under the federating states. They accepted the cancellation of the 774 local government that were put in the constitution. All these things, exhaustive report, scientific in, in its approach. And the report went uh, before, the, before our National Working Committee, where it was fully debated and agreed to. It was brought to us at the National Caucus. National Caucus is a group of uh, past administrators, past president, past vice president, past senior president, past uh, uh, speakers, past governors. Uh, it was at that level of calibers of, of people that uh, made up the National Caucus. With the president in attendance, the report was brought to us. We debated it, adjusted it. And the following day, it was taken to the National Executive Council, NEC, which is the final body. And it was adopted. Uh, I must say, uh, it had gone through all the organs of the party. What is now left then was to send the report to the National Assembly to debate and uh, ensure that it's, uh, a lot of the provisions are agreed to. To my shock, I believe some people sat on that report which, in actual fact, had gone through all levels of the party. And in attendance were all our governors and the president himself at all levels. I am surprised that um, some people could then sit on a policy already agreed to by all organs of the party. So that was the state in which we are. Mm. And um, Okay, sir. I, I, I have access, and I don't want to talk too much on the efforts that those of us in Southwest have been making and are still making okay. to ensure that we okay, sir. seriously address this issue. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, in-depth insight. Uh, I want to talk about insecurity. I want your comments on the Kankara Boys episode, insurgency in the north, and Amotekun. Why I say I'm a tech is because a lot of people, some watchers, 
I've said since Amoktekun started, there's been some level of sanity in the southeast, uh, in the southwest, beg your pardon. Uh, they have made a lot of arrests. Yeah. A lot of people now rely on Amoktekun for their safety now if they are kidnapped and the likes. They've been able to comb parts of the forest in Oyo and some other areas. So what's your take on all of this? Amoktekun and insecurity in general. Of Kankara course. Boys. I, can, I, I can tell you, the youngest Yoruba man, the average Yoruba man, and the, if it's not totality of Yoruba, uh, I can tell you, not, not just the majority, the totality of Yoruba are in support of Amoteku. And of course, Amoteku uh, is very, very crucial and important to our system. Amoteku, people misunderstand the philosophy behind Amoteku. Amoteku is, first of all, to, to, to operate as an intelligent gathering wing of our security because uh, police, policing and security should be localized. We used to have both native authority and local government police. Even in the days of in the colonial days, the colonial, colonialists operated through our age long system, which we had in Southwest. Now, they are the ones who know the terrain, who know their areas. I'll give an example. Um, Evans, who was a notorious kidnapper, has been convicted now was picking people and uh, hiding them somewhere in Festac. And because the police is over-centralized in Abuja, they did not know at all that Evans was hiding people in a populated and well-educated, exposed people in uh, Festac. If we have had uh, a localized police system, a localized security guarding system, there's no way a man like uh, Evans will have been able to carry out this terrible uh, security situation within uh, Lagos. And I remember when I was young in Lagos Island, there was a neighborhood intelligence guarding system. There were area fathers. If the will cover of uh, Ruben Abatika is stolen. There were people in the area father in Lagos, I call them area father because they were people who are respected and who have voices in each, virtually every street. They know who to call immediately and say, how dare you that the, they should produce, the, 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 the people should, pro the young men should produce the will cover and it will be produced. We need to go to that level of localized intelligence gathering. And that's why those who are critical of Aboteco and saying uh, Aboteco has not been effective, they are stupid. Because Aboteco is a new outfit. It will take time before Aboteco will settle. It will take time for the system to work uh, efficiently. So I, 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 I'm happy about it. And I have no regret in supporting Amoteku, in supporting our governors who had the courage. We are not fighting anybody. I don't know why anybody should be saying, well, I was sure when some people were criticizing why Southwest should have Amoteku. How can you say that uh, it's an offense for me to put CCTV in my house? It's an offense to put uh, electrical wire around my fence. How does that affect you in your, in your own in your own zone, in your own area. If I want it for Southwest, if I want Amoteku, so be it. For my own safety, for my own protection. Well, sir, uh, let me take you back to civil politics. Yes, you said the um, ACN was the most dominant group from the uh, Southwest, or from the South, in the uh, emergence of the APC. Uh, is the ACN caucus? Still that strong within the uh, APC. Now we have had uh, Chief uh, Bisi Akonde going to visit the president. 
uh, to remind him of the agreement that was reached uh, while APC was being put together. Uh, uh, former not, not, not Akode, by Seven Akode. Okay, yes, both of you. And then subsequently, um, uh -huh. former Governor Babatunde Fashola uh, also came forward to say that, well, the APC should not uh, uh, violate the agreement that was reached in 2013 and 2014, which we're told is that power will come back to the Southwest after uh, the North has had its turn on the platform of the APC. What will happen if, for example, uh, the North decides to disappoint the uh, ACN caucus within the APC? But you, you are asking an hypothetical uh, question, and uh, not being a, uh, a prophet of these Pentecostal uh, pastors who see visions, uh, of course, uh, former Governor Fashola is right. Uh, Fashola was a very strong member among the then governors who also worked very hard. The governor worked very hard. I think he was the first to host the governors of uh, uh, then ACN, uh, Okorocha from uh, Abga, and those of the APP, I think. Some of them from APP. Uh, I, I think uh, CPC then had, I think, I think one governor. He was the one that first of all hosted them. And he, 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 he played a leading role. I remember when we got to the point of not agreeing to the name or something crucial, uh, Fashola came in that day. He was sent by the governor to come and address us. And his visit at the major committee uh, created a window where we then agreed on a very major issue that, we, that was in contention. So Fashola is uh, a strong, knowledgeable member of the major group. And when he speaks, he's, he's speaking authoritatively. I, I, I support him fully. Uh, secondly, uh, we of the ACN, now a major part of APC. Well, I can tell you that... Sorry uh, to interrupt you, sir. We need to take a quick commercial break. Sorry to interrupt you. We'll take that commercial break and we'll come back to you. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News Channel. Still with us as our guest is Chief Olusha Gunoshoba two-time governor of Ogun State in southwest Nigeria, journalist, author, and one of the founders of the ruling All Progressives Congress Party in Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us, sir. Uh, well, you were going to talk further about uh, the ACN uh, caucus within the uh, APC and the agreement that was reached in 2013-2014. Yeah, of course. Well, I, I spoke about first, uh, 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 today, Fashola. Now, as to our visit, uh, uh, Governor Bisi and myself went, we, we were the leader of the uh, team that went to see pres the president. And we had a very intimate, and at our, at our level, we, both of us are over 80, and those that we went with are over 80. We should be honest, we were honest with the president. We went to discuss serious issues, and people were talking as if we went there to discuss uh, 2023. What is, uh, uh, who knows tomorrow? Why should we go and be discussing 2023 in 2020? We went there to discuss serious issues. We discussed security. We discussed the issue of uh, burning issue in Southwest about uh, restructuring the country, and we discussed the issue of uh, uh, answers and uh, the effect in, uh, in Lagos. That was why we went along with uh, Prince Olusi and uh, Dr. Yomifini. So we went there to discuss serious issues, and the president 
took time. I mean, gave us reasonable time. He took time to explain to us exhaustively all the efforts he was making about security. He listened to us on all the issues that we took to him. And um, we discussed Lagos because uh, the damage done to Lagos is too enormous. Uh, I, I was moved to tears when the day my wife and I went to Iboshire High Court. I couldn't believe that the High Court, where I caught my teeth as a reporter, covering the lack of renowned justices like uh, G.I.C. Taylor, Dadi Oyama, Udo Udoma, and uh, others, was devastated, totally destroyed. And it would, it, would, it would take billions, if not trillions, to restore it. Uh, last week, I went to Lagos Island. I went to visit a um, uh, family house of um, Governor Babajide Sonwulu. I was shocked at the junction of uh, Okekopo by Obedidu, where the house is located. The house was taken within a, within a complex and destroyed. As an example of how people went but tried to destroy our heritage in South West. These are the issues we went to discuss with the president. And we were honest with him, and he was open and frank with us. And we made suggestions as to the way forward. So we, we of the ACN, uh, we have access, and we will continue to use the access to speak truth to power. At the age of 80, I'll be 82 this year. What else is there that I should not be honest with anybody? I have been dealing with president from the days of the prime minister of Tafar Balewa. What then should, have, should I be afraid of as a reporter? So we went there to have serious discussion relating to the stability of this country. We, 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 we may not be happy, but we are doing our best to still make our voice hard within the party. Uh, but if you say that the ACN caucus may not be happy, what is it that makes the uh, ACN caucus unhappy within the APC? And I raised the question earlier on that if in 2023 uh, the uh, other part of the uh, merger disappoints the Southwest, I ask that uh, question advisedly because you recall, sir, that Dr. Kunle Olajide, the Secretary General of the Yoruba Council of Elders, had pointed out uh, not too long ago that the North is trying to play the South against itself, that the North now is beginning to talk of Southwest, Southeast, South-South, and that some moves are being made within the APC to align with the South-South as a way of disappointing the Southwest. Uh, how is the ACN caucus responding to some of these undercurrents? Take, for example, I, as the chairman of the Constitutional Drafting Committee, uh, I, I, I do know part of the problem of, of APC is that we abandoned the constitution that we drafted. We uh, did not implement a lot of the provisions of the constitution. Uh, I mean, that's a major issue for us. For example, uh, I will be honest with you, when we were debating the constitution, uh, we debated each of the powerful forces within the major then. Some people were afraid that uh, President Buhari has, a, has such a following in the north that are uh, committed to him and that he may become too powerful to handle. Some people felt Modu Sherif then could be a problem. We debated it. Some people felt that uh, Ashwa Jutidumbu in the southwest, I mean, different people had different opinions that Tirumbu may become a problem. We debated all the contending forces, and, the, and that was how we came to say that, uh, and some people fear that they don't want to produce an Obasanjo who became so powerful in PDP that he was removing chairman um, every other year, or every other month as, at his whims and caprices, and became perpetual chairman of the board of trustee. And that was why we came to the conclusion that let us rotate the chairmanship among the six different zones for the board of trustee. We had a large board of trustee, and that board of trustee was to break into committees to intervene 
in areas of problems and troubles all over the country. Till today, that board of trustees has never met. It has never been constituted. Of course, ACM people in the party, we are not happy about that. I'm just giving you as an example. Because that is part of the thing to create a strong party where we have check and balances. If we have started rotating the chairmanship from 2013, uh, we'll have had about four, five chairman, chairmen of uh, the board of trustees. And we said then that where we produce the president and the vice president will not be the first to start the rotation. So, so there are so many parts of the constitution which we put in to, to create a very strong party. So this is part of the thing that I say uh, is a frustration for some of us in ACN. As for uh, disappointment in politics, uh, where we went to an association, voluntary association. If, 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 I, if I marry you, marriage is a voluntary thing of two parties. If uh, the marriage does not work well, uh, whatever happens at that point, we, when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. But as far as I'm concerned, the next president should come from the South. And being democratic, I don't see anything wrong in allowing anybody from the southern part of this country to join in going to the primary. And let us have a very uh, open primary in, in our constitution. That was why we said there should be direct primary in which all members throughout the country will participate. In 2018, President uh, Barry submitted itself to a direct primary, and every member had a voice. And I don't know why, as of today, we cannot now do uh, electro electronic internet membership uh, drive. I, I keep saying, if Nigerian banks are so advanced that they can... Um, give you a lot. When any couple is taken from your account, you can see now that fraudulent practices has heavily reduced in the bank. If the bank can operate uh, internet banking successfully, I don't see why any party should not do electronic membership review. And where people can have access to their membership, the condition is that you should, uh, members to qualify should be a registered member in their particular village, in their particular local government, in their particular ward. And from there you can uh, check. So these are part of the thing that we in ACN are clamoring for, and for which I can say I, in particular, I'm not happy about as the chairman of the, the, draft, the community that drafted the constitution. We spent our money, we spent days and months to draft that constitution. We were not sponsored by anybody, we labored. And if only we, we, we follow our constitution, uh, there, there will have been less problem within the party. Mm. And Chief Oshaba, just some clarifications, um, because we've talked about the democratic nature of the ACN caucus in the party. Are you willing to dishonor the gentleman agreement to rotate power to the Southwest? For a Southeast presidency to emerge, I'd like to understand if that is what you're saying, because you said you agreed that you should rotate to the South. So are you willing to dishonor that agreement to allow a South uh, Eastern uh, emerge? And secondly, uh, speculations have been roving around the candidacy of uh, former governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinubu, as the potential presidential candidate for your party come 2023. Is that also an agreement of your party, the ACN caucus? Uh, would you like to clarify those two? First of all, uh, nobody in the Southeast has consulted me. And I must say, I, I am uh, a reasonable elder in the party. Nobody from the Southeast has contacted me to lobby, to even say that we're interested. I, I recall, uh, I, I was very strong in the campaign for, uh, uh, of uh, MQ Abela in uh, 1992. We went around the whole of the East. He and I went to see Dr. Namdi Azikiwe in his house. Uh, CC Ono, I can tell you, Mbakwe, 
we went around the whole of the East to lobby them that were interested. Nobody from the East has come to. I told one of my uh, close friends in the in the in the in, in government, who is a minister from the East, and Ibuban in uh, President Buhari's uh, cabinet. He, he spoke to me about a month ago, and I told him there's so much noise from the East. Who have you contacted or lobbied? And that MK Abella went around the country and lobbied. So as far as I'm concerned, nobody has, nobody, and I said categorically, has told me that the Igbo, the East, all I read, I, I read all of them in the newspaper. Two, yes, of course, uh, Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Dumbu, as an individual, has a right to put himself forward. We did not zero in on an individual. It is Bola Ahmed Tinubu's right to put himself forward. We, but my attitude is this. We in the Southwest will first of all unite, and this is what I've been preaching to everybody. In all the, there are too many groups in the Southwest. There are Fanny Ferry, Yoruba Council of Elders, uh, uh, the Akitoye group, World Council of Yoruba. Too many groups. We need to come together to speak with one voice. Uh, and when it comes to getting the presidency, if we want to get the presidency, let us, all of us, first of all, fight and ensure that the Southwest becomes a voice, a force to get the thing. I'm not going to zero in on, on any individual now. Zeroing on any individual will destroy our uh, effort. Uh, but Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu, as an individual, as a person, has a right to pursue his own uh, personal. Uh, agenda. Then, if you said that is the gentleman agreement you had, because let's not forget that APC too wasn't set up by just the ACN caucus and the CPC. There was also some people that came from the east, former AM people like Ogbonaya Onu. Then, what did you say you were going to give the Easterners that came to join you in this APC coalition before now? What did you tell them? Obojinaya uh, Anu was a, was a very strong uh, member, uh, a strong leader, because he was the chairman of uh, uh, AMPP then. I'm not saying that the Igbos, the doc, I'm talking of the party of Igbo extraction, APGA. I'm not saying that we didn't have powerful, I mean, there, is, there was Chris Ngige. He was in my committee of the uh, Constant Draft Committee. The current uh, attorney general was a member of my committee, uh, Malami. Okay. Uh, the current minister o of okay, health sir. Uh, was a member. Okay, sir. Yes. We'll, we'll, so we'll like... the, when you talk of the East, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, sir. We'd like to thank you so much. I know you wanted to say a lot about that, but uh, we don't have time. Thank you.